Hey, welcome back. Today I will show you how to batch export FBX files in Houdini. And for the batch export, we will use Houdini's PDG workflow. This is very useful if you got a single FBX file with a lot of uh, modular assets in it or a big scene and you want to export it separately into your game engine like Unreal for instance. All right, let's get started. As I said in the intro before, uh, I got this modular assets here in one um, FBX file. Uh, you, we're on the geometry level here. We got here our file node containing the FBX file. Then I use a transform node with a uniform scale of 0 0.01 and here we got our um, split chain to split the file into more single modules alright and if you go here display group attribute list and go to name attribute you see we got this we got our single modular assets here we got a complete list here on the name attribute and we need this name attribute to go on with our uh, workflow in order to split our FBX files later on, we need to get access to a pass attribute. So we just create a new attribute called pass. And this attribute is um, is on the primitive level. And it's a string. Because we got strings here. And we want to have this uh, at name attribute as our string. And if you look here, this doesn't work. And the reason is because a string within a string, it's possible, but you need to use um, backticks in Houdini. Sorry. Now you see that we got our string name here on the primitive level. This means this specific uh, mesh here uh, got this name attribute. And we need this um, pass attribute for every single mesh we just imported. So we will just copy this pass attribute and connect it with our output and let's lay out this uh, horizontal let's also get rid of the name attribute coloring and next we will need a switch node Right, and so you can see you can you can now toggle between the several inputs, and we will also need it for our PDG workflow. 
And I will give it um, an attribute here. You can call it uh, whatever you want, like bitch, bitchy. You get a warning here because we haven't assigned this variable not to our PDG network yet. So just ignore it. We put a null node here. And next we need a um, ROP FPX export. All right, and we got this pass attribute here. And we will now need it in our ROP FPX file. You have to click this button here. Build hierarchy from pass attribute. And now we got this pass attribute. If you don't use this pass attribute here, uh, you will get no separated meshes. All right, and now we're ready to add our PDG. Um, therefore, we need a help network. And the first node we got here is our local scheduler. You can leave the settings as default, um, except this one here. Total slots means um, your CPU slots and I always use this one. This means it uses all your uh, CPU cores uh, except the last one. So there's one core remaining for your OS or whatever. Next we will need a wedge node. All right, and um, here we got our wedge count. This means if you got six meshes, you have to put it here. And we need our uh, wedge attribute here. And this wedge attribute is the same attribute like we used here in our um, switch node. And just copy this one here. And put it here. And the switch node got an integer value. Because you switch from 1, 2, 3, 5 and so on. So, and like I said, if you got um, six meshes, for example, in your FX scene, uh, in Houdini, we count at one. So we got a range from zero, which means the first mesh, to five, which means we got our last mesh here. And of course, don't forget to change the attribute type to integer. And we have to resign it to 5. Alright, we got our switch attribute here. We got integer and our range. Alright, looks okay. Now we go back to our uh, drop FX. And we have to change a couple of things here to get access to the PG workflow. So dollar sign hip means this is your folder where you save your um, hip file you seen. And we just use a new folder like export. 
And now there's the important part. We have to get access to our primitive attributes, uh, our past attribute, and we need a, um, a function or a general expression here. So we have to start with backticks and we need a primp function. and our path attribute so and end with the back tick and let's also change the name here to something like this Okay, now we're going back to our top network uh, to get access to our previous ROP FPX export. We need a ROP fetch node here. All right. And under pass, we will look for our previous um, ROP FPX and it's under the object level geometry level and we will find it here under ROP fetch XPX and now we got our connection to this node and under schedule we have to change the inherit from upstream item. Uh, let's check if we got set up everything properly. And I just see I made a mistake. Actually, we set our attribute here in the top network. So be, be careful with it. And going back again. Just reload it to avoid any errors. And we're calling our attribute um, from the PDG in our switch node. And we're not setting it. So I was a bit lazy and just did it before the actual top network. All right. And now it should actually work. You can now cook the node with Shift G directly in this top network. But I would recommend to flag the ROP fetch net here and go to the top net. And now you can directly cook this node uh, from here. And using this here, cook output nodes. And you will ask to save and yes, save and continue. And now we see the network gets cooked. All right. And we got our work items here. And if you just click the dots here, the green dots, you see we got our first mesh. We got second mesh, third one, fourth, fifth, and the sixth one here. And green also indicates that everything worked fine. If your dots are red, this means your uh, cooking failed. In the PDG and the yellow one may indicate that there's a warning. We also got a warning here, um, but you can ignore it because we split our meshes here. 
with this line. And Houdini thinks we will save it in just one file, but it's okay. So you can ignore this error. You see we just exported our modular assets here. And they are ready to import to your game engine. And you see everything looks good. We successfully split our meshes and also with our proper naming. Alright, thank you for watching and if this tutorial was helpful for you, please like, comment and subscribe this channel. You know all this YouTube chess. Bye bye.